Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I did tell you it was going to be a short break, uh, you know, in between sets, uh, just because things have been going uh, so smoothly so far here at DVD League, which is pretty nice. Sometimes we have a couple of things that we need to we need to check, uh, double checking, triple checking things to make sure that we have a smooth production for you guys. But today, right now, so far, thankfully, knocking on wood. It's been really smooth sailing so far. Uh, we are going to be seeing the semi-final set, the other winner semi-set, Elysium X9. That one is going... To, I have been so excited to see this one for sure all week. So I am so happy that I get to be here on the mic today. Unfortunately, Rayoxium does have to leave. But I have another wonderful, great, excellent caster with me today. Cole, how's it going? I'm so stoked. I hope you are too. Oh yeah, no. This is this is the set I've been looking forward to for a long time. You know, going into this whole event, we had Elysium, ostensibly the best team in EU, X9, probably the strongest team in NA, and now we're finally get to see what happens when they face off. A bit of a grudge match from the Hens tournament that you mentioned uh, just before the last break. So this is this is what I've been looking forward to seeing. Yeah, I mean, look, just the fact that we. You know, just the fact that we are getting the run back of, of that of that tournament for sure, and it feels like we did. It feels like it was just like there were some moments that it felt so decisively in in um, X 9s hands. There was a game, obviously, um, that we saw that um, what you call it that we saw uh, Zeno just kind of go crazy on. We saw that Billy. Obviously, we're not going to see that this time around. You know, uh, that there are moments where Elysium can just take over, but then there are moments where X9 and Wispy specifically looks like the best DBD player on the planet. So we might be able to see Lightning strike twice this time around for X9, and that would be rewarding them with a ticket to winner's finals. But Elysium is definitely coming back with the vengeance for sure. Uh, let's take a look at the killers that we're going to see. Uh, obviously, we have Dr. Wraith Oni, but let's start off with the first one, the opening, uh, opening match. Uh, Cole, tell us a little bit more about it. So one thing I think is really interesting about this pick ban is that Every single one of them is an M1 killer. Only a little bit of a little bit of hybrid, but they're all M1 killers. Very pure skill expression in chase from both sides. And with Doctor being first pick, the interesting thing about this to me is we've been seeing for the winter event some some new maps that we have in the rotation to keep things a little bit you know spicy. And Wrecker's Yard, a map we see a lot of in competitive play, not really a doctor map exactly, you often would see him on like Wretched Shop or maybe Cold Tower, but Wrecker's Yard, that is the map that you will often see doctor on in the 1v1. So these players should probably actually have a fair bit of experience playing against doctor at least in that context on this map, but I wonder if the 4v1 will carry over for both of these teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, uh, experience um, is an understatement when it comes to these teams, especially when it when it comes to Elysium. Obviously, uh, you know, X Nine, one of the more new, newer, newer formed teams. Uh, Elysium, obviously, tons of experience. Obviously, they have uh, they have a lot to bring to the table. Uh, they have uh, some of the best survivors and some of the best killers in the world. Uh, obviously, you know, Zeno, one of the OG like Oracle players as well. So you know, has been playing for. A very very long time uh and obviously you know the big, the two big pickups for elysium over the last few months was zaka and royalty so that one those two are you know just they make this team so much more experienced right you know uh, Zeno plays all these specialty killers can play the m1 killers but also zaka feel i feel like has like uh you know even more uh experience with these m1 killers as well so that just makes it uh you know which one are you going to get hit by right you know what i'm saying so that, that actually can make it really really difficult to deal with if you are x9 and um Obviously, Wispy, one of the players who, you know, we talked about it earlier, when Wispy's locked in, looks might be the best DVD player on the planet. I mean, we see the way he can take over games, the way he can just bring it back from all these rough situations. We saw that a lot last week specifically as well. So uh, the Singularity Game 3 set last week between uh, X9 and Eternum was like definitely crazy to say the very least so but yeah the um this time around though dr game one like you said all the uh, all the m1 killers we got wraith and we got oni uh wraith is also uh, an interesting one i feel like wraith is uh 
I feel like I see a lot of different people like just able to pilot rate at such a such a high level. Uh, might be because of the accessibility, right? Just because of how easy it is to play Wraith. Uh, you know, the chase power, there's no complicated things to it. Obviously, you know, the add-ons do make a little bit of um, of a difference sometimes. But yeah, I don't know. What do you think about the Wraith set specifically? Wraith, Wraith here is interesting. We, we've often seen Wraith as a competitive staple. Again, very common 1v1 killer choice, very common 4v1, but traditionally on Dead Dog Saloon. And for this event, Wraith has been moved to Temple of Purgation, which is a very big map, not a map a lot of killer players seem to like, I think. And I, as far as I can remember, I know we've seen this set maybe once before between, I want to say, Calamity and Aeternum. I don't know if it was picked outside of that. And I wonder if the map is being a bit of a deterrent, but in a weird way, the size of the map can make it easy for survivors to be caught in a dead zone. And I'm I'm really not sure how this set is supposed to play out. You would think it would be a rough map for killer, but there is still a surprising amount of room for the survivors to just get caught out, get two tapped, and, and it's just game over from there. Which I, I will not expect to be happening here, granted. But um, very interesting. And, and the Wraith set, I will point out, was X9's choice. So we'll see if, if they in particular have something cooked up for this one. Yeah, Wispy might just like, Wispy might just, you know, like brute force his way on, on onto Elysium with that Wraith for sure. And like you said, this map uh, might be a little bit of a deterrent. I will say, you know, I, I said this before the set had even started between, uh, I believe it was uh, Calamity and... Um, I'm sorry, I, I forget who played last week specifically, Wraith. But it was... Run Windstorm. Do not run, like, run all your other add-ons, whatever add-on, second add-on you want. Windstorm is such a necessity on this map because you need to get from point A to point B, even with, uh, even with a slightly, uh, faster, uh, um, speed went uncloaked that was that was added you know maybe i think like two years ago now i could i could be wrong but just the fact that you just need that extra speed to body block windows body block pallets get from point a to point b when you're cloaked it feels like you know we saw two different schools of thought we saw we saw windstorm and no windstorm and it felt like no windstorm took forever to actually just get around from point a to point b so um but yeah like you said x9 wispy might have something cooking for sure but yeah we're gonna have to see uh what what the what the plays are going to be right there for set two and if we go to a tiebreaker we're going to see the oni which uh obviously i feel like xeno and zaka both play oni and wispy uh wispy has actually picked uh or x9 has picked oni uh against other teams as well in the past so you know definitely something that they're very comfortable with so wispy is gonna uh definitely show some crazy plays there potentially if we get that far um that one's on dead dog saloon obviously we talked about it uh before in the first set with reoxium it was more so of like you know if you can get that power the distance between uh between point a to point b is so short on that map but regardless um my uh, slight NA bias will come out. I feel like, you know, I want to see X9 uh, repeat history yet again. Cole, what do you think, though? Who do you think might be uh, the winner of this match? I honestly don't know. We've seen Elysium be a little bit shaky at times. We've seen X9 do a little trolling in some of their games. So it'll really boil down to who is on form today, who shows up. And with that, we are ready to load into the first game. Yeah, let's get it. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I actually don't think we're going to go to any breaks at all. We're just going to get right to it just the way I like it. I am so excited. Yeah, like like you said, Cole, you and me both, we've both been uh, very, very excited to see, uh, you know, this match already for the last few days. Obviously, when the, when the bracket was set up, it was more so like, okay, these two are on a collision course for each other a lot earlier than expected. It's going to be really fun to see, and we're finally going to get to see it. And with that, we are kicking off the first game. We've got Doctor on Wreck Wrecker's Yard, rather, and it will be the Survivors of X9 playing against Zaka. We weren't sure if we'd be seeing Zaka or Zeno. We have our answer. Zaka starting off with a static blast. He finds three, possibly four survivors with this, and he's going to be taking a chase loosely over into a corner pocket here with the Corrupted Gen, far away from what survivors want to work. This is the best spot to be. Tile's not as great as it could be, but... We'll see if the survivors will come out, and they will get tagged right near it. Haunt taking a hit and taking his speed boost directly to the shack. Yeah, gonna make it over to that shack side right there. Zaka maybe trying to find a mind game, maybe cut off. 
hunt. But we are going to see, yeah, that pallet drop is really important. And yeah, that was a smart place to do. Obviously, some obviously Doctor being a counter looper can close the distance between pallets, but we see uh we see Haunt very just intent on making it over to this crane right here. Unfortunately, not gonna be able to make that filler pallet on the ah! other side of it. We are going to get that first uh first down onto Haunt very, very early. I mean when in when in doubt, just run edge map, right? An interesting choice here to see. Uh, Zaka has opted for Agitation, a perk which has been being picked up fairly often in this format. And the value of being able to secure Pain Resonance like we see here, being able to secure a hook strategically where you want it, and in this case, haunting hook next to a generator with pretty good active progress is rough. If Zaka decides to, um, you know, secure some more stages onto Haunt, he has this gen that's being interrupted, which would be very close to popping another one. This is about to pop one as well, so... If, if Haunt had been hooked in a different spot, this could have been three gens popping for it. Instead, we're probably only going to get two, and Zaka is sort of hovering over back to this hook, but it looks like there are two gens that are very close to it, but not a third one. So, if if Zaka continues to hover here, well, I guess there's one that's kind of close, but but if, if Haunt is secured on hook, it's going to depend how much gen progress they can get for it. And we'll have to see how that pans out. As Zaka is just content to hold this choke, there's nothing around here, no pallet, so anyone trying to one for one for Haunt is going to get two tapped. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely well said for sure. I mean, not too much around here in terms of resources. Maybe there's a window on the other side of this garbage can, but like you said, Zaka definitely intent on securing the second hook or the second hook stage onto Haunt right here. But yeah, these survivors again, they're you know Zaka's you know throwing out these shock therapies, trying to get uh, maybe someone rotating in, maybe trying to stealth their way in, but no one home for it. Everyone's just very intent on doing gens, and that's why we see the stat. Static blast come out just to get some information, maybe cut some people off. And like you said, we have sort of a loose regen here potentially. So this is going to be a situation of whether or not you can commit to this save, or are we going to see Haunt just go out altogether? Yeah, I mean the survivors can also. They're probably at this point just making the decision if they're going to <laughs> save Haunt since he's already hit second. You just wait until the last second. Keep in mind, Doctor is able to interrupt that unhook animation with his shock. So if he wants, he can just deny that from you altogether, even bypassing the 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 one for one. And Doctor being a weak enough chase killer, there weren't really a whole lot of resources used in the first chase. So if the survivors had decided to let Haunt go and just die here and play out the three v one, they're still in a pretty good spot as Wispy will be taking the hit for him and now that gives haunt some time to make it at least further away from these gens he does have a pallet here but playing this unsafe edge map auto haven pallet against a doctor on ping is rough but he has lies so he just plays the pallet for the vault to get distance and he's running towards um a different tile in an area where the gens have already been done unfortunately again a fairly weak tile looks like the rng not as good as it could be and this will be a down for haunt he has Unfortunately, not getting his hope quite in time. This will be the death onto Haunt. But once again, the last gen is popped. Zaka has no endgame perks. So, unless Wispy is the one who's on chase, and it looks like he is sort of nearby, the other survivors are actually sitting pretty here, as long as Wispy's able to make it out, and he's got two teammates to take hits for him. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a static blast for more information, like you said. Uh, I mean, man, that... Three hook stages potential. I don't think. I think there might be uh, a little bit of a down happening right here. Yeah, you see it right here. Um, you know, being cut off, Wispy able to make it. There's obviously this pallet right here that you have to drop pretty early, but you're getting zoned out. There's not really much else to go to. This might be. This might be. Um, Six stages, two fresh hooks right here. Uh, you know, if we can't find, yeah, a little bit of a firecracker right there, maybe to cut Zaka off and blind him a little bit. Uh, but Zaka's so aware, so aware of the pathing. Uh, definitely a solid, you know, even even just like a solid like one v one player too. So uh, obviously has a really uh, good idea of the pathing that these survivors want to take. That's gonna be the vault with the quick reply. Doesn't even matter. Gonna get the hit right here. And now this is the million dollar question: Do you take? three more stages and another fresh hook or do you try to make something happen i think well so we just saw a survivor pre-drop the shack pallet so zaka cannot take wispy basement that's actually possibly huge now the thing is because zaka has agitation he's able to carry him further away from the exit gate and that's the main consideration right 
if you want to go for this save, you want to make sure that Wispy is close enough to the gate that you can actually get there. But in this case, survivors are just going to take their outs. They know, okay, there's no shot that we can actually save Wispy without doing a one for one. And if we do that, what will happen is Wispy extra will maybe get off, but then yes, it's an extra fresh hook. And then we just repeat the same cycle. Whoever, whoever one for ones is now another three stages. So you're just kicking the can down the road and giving Zaka an extra hook stage every time. So we will end up with a 2K6, two freshes, and very, you know, clean split down the middle as far as win cons are concerned for the killer yeah. of X9 coming up next. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, like, you know, maybe Wispy, obviously Wispy being the captain of this team, probably telling them, hey, like, y'all just leave. Like, get out of the way. I got this coming back, right? So that's going to be a, a, a really nice finish to see. And like you said, going to go to a short break, going to come back. It's going to be Wispy on the Doctor versus uh, Elysium. Welcome back. The stage is set for set one game one of this Elysium versus X9 faded matchup, and it's very simple. Wispy has to get seven hook stages if the survivors finish all the gens or three fresh hooks in order to break the win condition right here. Assuming that all the gens get done right here, but already first chase onto Zeno, is that going to be potentially a down or a, I mean a hit? Maybe potentially gonna get the vault, uh, Shaq right here, getting the window vault. So that's gonna be really scary. You're gonna confirm to this right here. Oh, but try to, oh my goodness, try to get a cutoff right there. Granout not able to actually get it to pan out, and you see the shot towards the window in case uh, Granout was going for it. So, and this is scary to deal with. Oh, both players got shocked, unfortunately. That makes it really hard. You see Zeno trying to get some hits right here. Understanding that the latency might be an issue right here. Great body block, but now we're just going to get the switch on to Zeno. Yeah, I think what we were seeing there at that first hit was knowing that the Doctor Shock cancels you from dropping the pallet. He had a teammate to try and come in and drop the pallet for him, and Wispy just swinging through it like a madman gets the tag onto him. So we have two injuries, not a down so far, and Wispy bringing rapid brutality into this game. A perk that came out relatively recently, we have not seen a lot of it, giving you a bit of a speed boost after an M1. It's kind of similar to, say, the best for last in function, but these survivors are just crawling out of the woodwork to give each other body blocks. Three injured now, but not a down yet. And we're back to the, the shack, as we'll have to see how the shock timings pan out. There is another pallet here, and the survivors are gonna get that pallet on in time. Oh my god, gets the pallet stun in time, and but yeah, the rapid brutality, if I'm not mistaken, like, we, we're, we're, we're seeing a little bit of use of that, and I'm pretty sure it's all been from Wispy. Uh, definitely last week we saw a lot of rapid brutality, if I'm not mistaken, so. Uh, but gonna find right here, uh, Zaka gonna get the firecracker, no, not gonna get the blind pallets right here, though. Can you get the drop? Yes, you are! Shoutouts to Q, get stunned. We're going to rotate over to this side of the map as well. Another pallet potentially right here, and this first down has been delayed for quite some time. First generator already popping as well to boot. Can we get it? No! Sokka able to still zone Wispy out and get that pallet. Makes it to this tile right here. There's a window access right here if you can get it. Uh, unfortunately, though, might not be able to get it to pan out right here. Trying to get the window vault here to cut Sokka off. Can we get this pallet drop? It looks like we might be able to. Yeah, and I think we might have to start adding pallet suns to the win condition at this rate as another a whiff on the window hit there and the survivor is doing a very good job of staying alive in chase. We were seeing a lot of body block earlier and that time has come in crucial. And I want to point out here, you know, every comp doctor will be running this discipline add-on to make the shock away faster, but it also kind of screws with your protection of the red stain. But on an auto haven pilot, you can also just look over the wall if you tilt your camera down, and that's helping these survivors immensely here, as the first hook will come in at four gens, Zaka getting hooked. Well, I don't know if that was a pain resonance. It was, in fact, a pain resonance. So now Wispy popping that static blast to see if he can find the remaining survivors. And I will say, in the previous game, we had almost three gens popping for that first down. So despite the first chase being delayed by altruism, the gen progress is not quite the same as we had before, and also with more resources being used for it. So depending on how the second chase pans out, this could actually be a better position for Wispy here than what we had previously. 
that's a very good point for sure that that you're making obviously like uh you know we we're i was getting a little hyped obviously to see just like the altruism plays you know even through the latency potentially getting those pal almost perfect pallet stuns as well through the swings able to actually like like we said deny that first down but you know that second chase can prove to be everything for sure so definitely a good point to make right there but we're gonna see three gens pop potentially right here so it's gonna go down immediately to maybe confirming the second stage and then maybe getting another down that way you confirm two kills to at least tie the win condition potentially if you play this well enough so uh this is gonna be a a, a, a little bit of a tough situation though because now yeah now now one gen remaining already obviously like we said uh that first gen you know it was one gen being done but it feels like you know they were just you know slamming gens for sure for sure, and the fact that we're now down to one gen and the unhook comes in onto Zaka, Wispy's probably gonna play for a fresh here onto Kexo, who does have balance and he also has hope. So if they have that last gen popping, which I don't believe it has any progress on it, this is probably the worst survivor you could chase. Keep in mind, the, the whole doctor chase is basically he shocks you, he gets a little bit of distance. He shocks you again, a little more distance. And you do that until you finally get it down. But Wispy now leaving does not get the tag onto Zeno that might have been resilience value. He's just going to get out of dodge as now Zaka has been spotted. He is injured. He is on death hook and there's not a whole lot left here on the map. This is round two of that chase and he's possibly angling to just die in a corner. There's no pallet here that I can see, but he's got another teammate. Elysium is really on point for the body box. Yeah, <laughs> he's got another teammate. I feel like it's, you know, uh, like, like I've been yapping about it a whole lot, but like the ping issue, like the way you get rid of it is you just have someone body block and it's over. Are we going to see potentially a third one or are we going to get this down on Tazaka? Yeah, you have to get this window vault right here. The cutoff, the quick and quiet value may be closing a little bit of distance. No, Wispy's going to get Tazaka right here. And Zeno already fully injured, so or fully healed, I mean. Yeah, zeno has got a beam, but he's not quite in position to get that. And this will be the hook. It will be the blind as soon as the hook comes in. But now, remember, he needs to get four more stages or three with two more fresh. And there are two injured survivors. One of them does have adrenaline. I cannot remember which one. He will find the healthy survivor. It is, okay, so it's Zeno who has adrenaline and who's already healthy. So this is arguably the one survivor you don't want to chase right now. So he's going to break chase and look for whoever the injured survivors might be. There's a loud noise notification. He knows someone is over here at the fun bus. No gen here. And it is Renato Grenout being spotted with the pre-drop pallet not safe against doctor and this should be a down onto granout right now yes it is not quite getting that live vault in time unfortunate and there's a hook right here right next to Nexigate. how convenient yeah how convenient um but like you said uh definitely uh making the right call obviously wispy has no idea who's running adrenaline making the right call and it might come back to reward him later not going after Zeno because if he if he got if he chased Zeno for a little bit longer and then eventually did get that hit on the Zeno and they pop that gen that's just another uh, adrenaline right here and going for Grenau and this is the third fresh hook so after this they have to play a near perfect game just to make it out because this would this uh this win condition might potentially be everything you know you you have to assume that we're gonna get the last gen done right here yeah it's gonna be the down right there onto kexo so uh yeah this might be this might this might potentially be game one going to x9 if they can confirm another one or two stages if i'm, if I'm not mistaken already has the three fresh hooks confirmed right here next yeah next stage would be a win for for wispy the one interesting thing about this is you know, we mentioned in some of the earlier games of this event that the survivor balancing is a little bit more lax than it normally would be. And I think Doctor is a killer that's typically punished a little bit harder by that. The fact that we normally would not see survivors having exhaustions, not having adrenaline, not having hope. All these, you know, perks that give you a boost and chase, and they have those things up, or at least a lot of them. Um, I think Doctor, being a fairly linear character in his chase gameplay, not a whole lot you can do outside of just the basic timing, is punished a lot more by this. And we're seeing some somehow better results than we typically would see, I think, from like a Cold Tower set with those restrictions. So um, I'm, I'm curious why that exactly is happening. Is Wispy, with a hook on the hill, is able to just sit there and guard it, but keep in mind, now Grenout is not working a gen. Maybe the one play that might have is, we know Zeno is healthy and has adrenaline. He could be in a position to go for a one for one, but he's the survivor working a generator instead. And if Kexo goes to second stage, that's just the loss. I'm not sure what their plan is. 
Yeah, I'm not really 100% sure either. That's unfortunate. And yeah, right there, that's going to be the win for X9 for game one. That, um, a little, a little anticlimactic to, to, to set the, to, to match the win, or to better the win condition this time around. But man, that was, uh, that was crazy. I mean, look, that, that switch from Xeno towards, uh, towards, uh, Granau or Kexo was honestly, I feel like that might have been the win right there for, for X9. Just because, you know, you're switching over from the person who has adrenaline and is fully healthy to the person who does not, to two people who do not, and who were injured. And obviously Sloppy Butcher maybe uh, playing a little small role. Maybe, you know, survivors are thinking, you know, it's not worth it to take this time to get this heal. You know, maybe we spend this time on gens, but then they get caught out in no man's land. And, and you know, that and that, and that ended up uh, working out for Wispy. So, uh, you know, the captain coming in, leading by example, securing that first dub. And Elysium Survivor play here, again, with with how altruistically they played all of the hit tanks that we saw, that's giving us an example of why we used to see a lot of M1 killers like Doctor or, or Demogorg or something like this bringing in forced penance over Sloppy Butcher to, to punish Vibers for doing this. We've not been seeing a whole lot of it. That perk has kind of fallen out of favor for the more consistent Sloppy Butcher. You know, it works no matter how you play. And with the exit gate being open, with Grenout taking chase, Zeno possibly coming in for a hit as he's not leaving, or waiting to delay his um, departure until Granat is in position to get hatch. However, Wispy is just zoning Granat at this bus pallet here in the window, and he will not be able to get anywhere. This is- he will make the bolt this time if he doesn't mind, and Zeno now here for the hit tank instead of the, the hatch escape, so... Granat with pathing directly towards the exit gate, he should be able to get there, but Zeno had, is actually injured, and... Now Zeno has to oh. hold on at Shack until Grenout can leave. And now the question yeah. is, will Zeno stay here or just try and get his distance and take out Wispy? Oh no. I mean, he's, he's Zeno's going away from the door and from the hatch. That's going to be the hatch close right there, potentially. No, I'm just going to go for the immediate down. Just knows that he's right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. You, look, sometimes, sometimes, you know... Just, you, <laughs> Just do it to him like that. You know what I mean? You just gotta, you just gotta hit him with that. So really, really smart stuff. I mean, look, it was, it was a good, it was a good, it was a good run. But X9 taking that first game. Uh, I want to say to a little surprise, but also not really. Even though it was Elysium's pick, uh, we know that you know Zeno able, or Wispy. I mean, when he's locked in, able to get the results that he needs in order to get, uh, in order to put his team in front. That's exactly what he's doing. Taking the first, uh, the first doc, the first set with Doctor, and now going to switch over to the Wraith, which was X9's pick. So uh, we might see potentially a 2-0 here. Best of three, not best of five like it was uh, before earlier. So much shorter set. But we are going to see the Wraith coming in uh, right after this break, though. Don't go anywhere because, you know, these matches have been going by so fast. Blink and you miss it. So uh, we'll be right back uh, after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are kicking it off on the Temple of Purgation, and both teams are praying for a good result here. Wispy on the Wraith versus the survivors of Team Elysium. And Wispy has already found, looks like two survivors, found Zaka over at this quad pillar setup with a pallet here, using that Windows of Opportunity. And the mining is coming here, but this is a fairly long loop. It should be safe as Zaka's gonna cast her here. No, he will make the stun. And with we're gonna go ahead and cloak, get that Shadow Dance value. We're gonna shred through all the pallets that we can to try and zone. Actually, no, Wispy will just leave straight up and see if he can find someone else off guard. Remember, unfamiliar map, big map, a lot of places to get caught out, and Wispy looking to do that as the other survivors would have been in rotation, knowing that Zaka had just taken Chase. And there's a pallet drop from Zeno. Chase will be starting onto him. Yeah, definitely gonna start right there on the Xeno. Maybe uh, just another cloak up, just to push people off of gents a little bit. Uh, and then something to know also, we see the switch, the sub substitution uh, for um, Kexo. Now we get to see Royalty take a shot at X9 right now. So are we going to get a hit here on Zaka though? Maybe trying to get these mind games again. 1v1 grinders over here. You gotta be careful, man. Maybe not confirm, but gets the Pokos onto the pallet and the hit. Both sides ending up taking a little bit of a blow right here. Can Zaka reach this window though, or is he gonna get cut off is the question. 
yeah, a lot of these pallets are just super unsafe against Wraith on ping, especially with the uncloaked speed. And they will get the pallet stun and the blind onto Wispy on the Shack pallet. Good pallet down, but getting some distance. And actually, Zaka has been kind of cut off here at the Shack. He will be body blocking Wispy on the pallet, or the window vault rather. And he will just get away from Shaq, but he's got nothing to work with besides a Z wall, which is a little bit toxic to abuse if you ask me. But this should be down unless another body block coming in from Grenout, but it's just not quite there. Wispy reaches around him, slams Zaka on the ground, and now switching his focus to Grenout gets the free tag with Sloppy Butcher coming in and possibly not committing. There's no pallet or anything to save Zaka, so that's just a free hit. Yeah, free hit right there, gets the down, manages to slip through the cracks and able to get that first down onto Zaka. But man, is this going to be a pain res? Yes, it is. Going to get a little bit of a slowdown right here onto the generators, but only not even a single gen worked on. We see the we see the the drop right there, potentially a BL. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what it was. But so did Wispy, which is why you see the cutoff right here onto Zeno. Going to just pre-drop that pallet right there. Going to Oh wow, are we going to get the hit here? No, just gonna get the just gonna get the cloak right here. Can we see potentially another tag right here on Tazino? We have this window right here, so we potentially could see it. That's why you see Wispy not commit with that cloak, uh, that uncloak. I mean, can we find maybe a cutoff right here? Just gonna kick the gens, just put some more progress, and this is where it slows down just a little bit because no one's really committing for this uh, for this un rescue on Tazaka. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Wispy's game plan is here. He's kind of hovering the hook and. There aren't that many pallets left around here. Two of them are dropped from Zeno there just a second ago. We will have two gens popping, and Wispy looking to confirm second onto Zaka, knowing Zeno's kind of hovering for this pull here, but he's actually gone instead to Shaq to try and pick that up. It's about halfway done, a little bit more than that. And that will be the gen progress the drivers get for Zaka going to second. And on top of that, the side of the map where Zaka is going to be unhooked, being mostly dead. And against Wraith, that is a very spooky predicament to be in, especially in unfamiliar territory. I also want to highlight, once again, because of the balancing here being a little bit more lenient, we're used to survivors not really having a lot of chase perks or healing perks against Wraith, which they at least have chase perks now. I don't believe there's really any good healing perks that are up. So Zaka getting unhooked and taking the BT hit immediately. Surely this will be a tunnel out onto him, but Royalty is hovering for the teamwork as Zaka has a pretty good loop here into a TL wall. Very abusable if he plays it correctly, he will go for that vault. Wispy gonna go ahead and bam it, and he bams the window which is closest to the pallet, which is what you want to do, and unfortunately, Zaka not quite able to make that pallet, he will die on it, and there is royalty hovering around for that save. Wispy is gonna have to, at a minimum, try to go for a tag onto royalty to know if that Claudette is still hovering around, but that's also buying time for another Elysium survivor to get into position for that pallet save, or possibly a pickup. So Wispy looking to commit to royalty, who did a little bit of a, a you know, a windmill there, not going for the Marking distance as she goes into a locker instead to buy time and Wispy deciding to go ahead and go back to Zaka. Zeno here for the pallet drop and will get the stun after the uncloak. Perfect timing. Wispy cloaks and res resume his chase onto Zaka. Lisi's running edge map. Yeah, definitely running edge map. Has an access to another tile right here. Can we get. Oh, this is going to be a stun, right? He body blocks it? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. I was about to say, there's no way he body blocks it enough to actually uncloak and get that hit. But how much time are you really gaining right here, especially with the add-ons right here? Yeah, you have to you have to commit you have to commit to the the quick vaults right there in order to force the bait. But regardless, able to still get around and now Zeno uh, potentially getting hit. And it looks like yeah, Wispy's just gonna commit onto Zeno. We have that pallet right there. The BL coming in clutch. Yes, it is. And another generator pops, buying a little bit more time. This is a rough situation. For Wispy, we had Zaka potentially just dead, dead already, but now we see the switch on to potentially another survivor, and we see out of frame Grenout and Royalty potentially rotating right here. Can we get, or Zaka and Royalty, can we get a down right here? Can we get potentially the sacrifice onto Zaka? Oh, this is absolutely the climax of the game. Yes, we're down to only one gen left with only two hook stages, but every survivor is injured. Most of the pallets on the map are down. This is going to be the death on the Zaka. Not quite able to get that pallet save from Granout or, or the beamer that he has. So now going into a 3v1 with three injured survivors, no good healing perks, not a whole long way of resources, and they're committing for the last gen. Is the adrenaline no. playing the Granout? He downed the wrong person. How he downed you know? the adrenaline gamer. Oh no. But, and man, that's only, that's only three stages. 
he's, he's for sure getting the down onto Zeno here, and he's easily in a position to go for... Okay, well, he can... I don't know if he's going to hook or slug here, but the other two survivors being injured still and not having any progress on gates. Actually, that one of the distance, I believe, is being worked. But this is still a situation where these survivors are not out of the woodwork yet. That gate is almost certainly going to be open. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be open, and by the time, even with even even with uh, even with the buffs, can we get potentially? Yeah, that's so unlucky. That's so unlucky. We're going to see the we're going to see the switch out uh, onto onto Grenau and uh, Zeno. Oh no, are we only going to get four hook stages this time around? No, no, no. We have we have to get more, right? It could be hatch. Man, well, actually, is... no. He's he's being zoned a bit away from the shack. He won't make it. This should be a, a down and death on the Grenau. I, I think yeah. with where, yeah, they're gonna take their outs. With Grenau gonna be hooked so far away from that gate, there's no shot they would reset and uh, go for the rescue. So this will be a 2k7 with three freshes. 2k7 with three freshes. I mean, it looked like, you, you know, we could have potentially seen maybe the death on the on Tazaka, maybe uh, biting a little bit more than he could chew by fully committing on the royalty because we saw the, we saw the tag on the royalty, right, to avoid the altruistic uh, pallet stun. But it was also like you saw Wispy commit even further, and then that resulted in Zaka getting put up, and that that uh, that sacrifice being delayed just a little bit longer. I don't know if that could have came back to bite him in the very end, or if regardless, it you know it works out for Wispy. We're gonna have to see in uh, in the second half of this set right here. I mean, the win condition set. Um, you know, we're just gonna have to see if uh, Zaka or Zeno ends up um, depending on who kills. Uh, we're gonna have to see what uh, what they have to bring to the table. Are we going to see potentially a different build, a different play style? Uh, more on that after this break. Welcome back, everyone. The stage is set, and I feel like it's crazy that I'm saying this. Elysium's winners bracket on the line potentially here. Gotta hit match or or better the win condition of seven hook stages and three fresh hooks gonna find the um you know the uncloak onto jaw right here and a little bit of an interesting misplay right there maybe potentially you know ultimate weapon so you know the, i'm not sure why the locker was being opened a little bit but regardless wispy going to take that and run a little bit further potentially to a safer tile and now we see uh jaw potentially being cut off right here are we going to see the yeah, we have to see that early drop right because you don't want to get you don't want to get pokos through the pallet right even with the pallet drop so you got to be careful there right cole mm -hmm. so Zeno was expecting a head-on play that's why he checked the locker when Wisby, when Wispy pathed through the shack the way he did, that's the perfect angle to get a head-on in that locker. So Zeno just going for the gamble, like, well, hey, if there is a head-on in this locker, I get a free pull, and that's a hook at five gens. But there wasn't anyone there, and now we find Wispy again, and there's a tag on him. And I want to point out, Zeno has opted to bring Eruption instead of Sloppy this game, so we're not going to see as much value from chain tagging, but a lot more gen regression is now Haunt is the one who's in his sights. Pallet is not safe against a Wraith, and that will be a tag onto Haunt as well. And he's got Lucky Break, but not really able to break LOS. I'm not sure how valuable this perk will end up being on this map. There's just not a whole lot of tiles to run, I guess, and now the tag on the chase on the Z-Wall... Bad news for Haunt, and that's the down. Yeah, it's the down, but how much damage can we reach a, uh, a hook in time uh, before Pain Res ends up hitting? And it looks like, yeah, we're definitely going to reach to that point. Uh, and that's, like you said, that's the eruption value as well. Going to get pop as well, stacking with that as, uh, like you said, tons of slowdown. I mean, you know, this is a... This is a build that I feel like Xeno maybe is trying to go for in order to just, uh, like, stall out as long. Oh, that's still stunned from that far away. That's crazy. But, yeah, I feel like this is a build that he's very keen on just, like, outlasting these survivors, right? Like, just delaying, delaying, delaying the game as long as he can. But that down right there, that swing on the Wispy going to end up working through. It felt like, you know, that lunge was just, like, max range lunge. But now are you going to get cut off potentially here? Going to get some pop value. Uh, but going to look for someone potentially here. Nobody home. But now we see the ro the rotate right there. You can't get that heal onto Haunt. And now we see the chase onto Jaw. So Wispy just on the ground. We're going to we're gonna see potentially the first gen pop. And maybe that's going to be the rotate over to Wispy in order to pick him up. 
And this is a much more fast-paced version of the set than we saw in the previous game. That last game was a slow grind in the beginning, getting tags, getting pallet sound, but not getting a lot of hooks until later in the game where we had this climactic ending. And Xeno playing a much more fast-paced style, getting these tags super early, not going through as many resources, and the hooks are coming in much faster with that's really going to give him value out of these perks. And so far, the survivors of X9 have not quite been able to get into a position to reset. We saw an interruption on the reset previously. And Zeno, not super concerned about tunneling, really wanting to get value out of his gen regression perks. And this will be now Vistuous, the only healthy survivor remaining, getting chased off a of gen and surely being tagged here. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the tag right there. Did we get the cloak up right here? Yeah, I think we are just going to rotate somewhere else. And like you said, definitely not really, uh, not the end of the world if he doesn't get a tunnel out. It's more so, like you said, it's about getting the perk value, getting the gen uh, regression perks, uh, making them work in this situation. Yeah, this is a tough mind game to deal with. And oh, no, that's going to be a down right here. But we do see Wispy around potentially. So, you know, Zeno's kind of looking around for that, maybe trying to get uh, potentially the hit right here or at least chase uh, uh, Wispy away, but it looks like we're just going to get this commitment onto Wispy because, well, what's Jock going to do if he's, fully, uh, if he's fully down? So, oh, but goes through the swing around the pallet. No one home, Wispy holding forward. Smart decision. How okay. long can you last this? Uh, can, how long can you last in this chase, though? No, we're just going to cut our losses and just go pick up Jaw. Jaw still slugged, and, and Zeno's seeing that Vistuous and Haunt have reset in the distance, knowing that Wispy is in front of him right there. He knows, okay, there's no one actually around to hover for Jaw. This is a free pickup. And the survivors of X9 are getting a little bit of a recovery in with those resets, which is very important with a race set. Because of how easy it is to be caught off guard, you have to play this a little bit slowly, a little bit methodically. It's very easy to panic and let those nerves set in, and, you know, staying healthy is so crucial here. So. Now, Zeno does get another tag back on to Vistuous, and he's not going to commit, though. Looks like he's going to try to go back to Jaw. Yeah, looking like he's trying to go back. Yeah, potentially maybe cut. Yeah, that's the pallet drop immediately. Oh, but the sw oh, but the vault right there end up work ending up uh, ending up being a favorable position right there uh, for Wispy. Are we going to get this window though? Yeah, can you make it around in time? I think you barely make this pallet. Yeah, you make this pallet right here, so, you know, now you can play it a little bit. Are we going to see the drop, though? Who's going to bite first, right? It's a game of chicken. The point tech into the drop. Wispy, so aware. Maybe outsmarting Xeno just a little bit longer this time around. Are we going to see the rotate over maybe to another tile? Yeah, makes the window for sure, 100%. Now we're going to get the distance cut off. If he goes to the window again, then you can uncloak. But now it's going to look like he's finally going to get this down, potentially. And this is no! Oof. Wispy just reading him, and now there's a hit coming in from Jaw. Three, the other three survivors have reset in this time, and the, the lack of Sloppy Butcher is making this not as painful for them. This this has to be another down relatively quickly to bring this game back. Now the body block not going to come in. Wispy is just milking this Ormond tile for everything it's worth. This is now going to be the Shadow Dance break on the pallet. Wispy crouching to hide his cries, make it a little bit harder to read where he's going. He has a Z wall. He has not much else. He's playing edge map, but there's nowhere to go from here. This will be a down on the Wispy almost certainly now. And he just makes it to the comp corner before he finally goes down. And we've got Cyrus on three separate gens. And we're at what will be the fourth hook stage with, I believe, yeah, still only three fresh. So. We're looking for Xeno to get either eight stages or a fourth fresh at seven. And this is a reasonable pace depending on how much gen progress fires actually have with these three gens being progress. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Pop is going to end up coming in uh, right here, getting some damage. And I will say, depending on what, depending on if they're trying to just get all the gens done in time, I was about to say, this is the one survivor you do not, you do not want to be found right now. If you're Vistuous, that's our last fresh hook. So if we get this down right here, no, he's just going to leave again, knowing that he can come back. Zeno, I feel like, is so confident in getting these tags, getting these downs, that he's just not afraid. So he's very much willing to let someone go, knowing that he can come back later and, and actually get the down, which is exactly what's going to happen right here, because now Vistus is on a dead zone. That's going to be our last fresh hook. We're going to get the mind game here. No, no, not at all. That's going to be the fourth fresh hook. So now... Seven stages, definitely all that uh, Zeno needs in order to send this to a tiebreaker. 
and this pressure is just snowballing a little bit out of control. Yes, we've got a third gen popping, and Wispy will be saved right before he dies, but that is a fresh hook on Vistuous. That is the last pain resonance, and now two survivors still injured. Zeno keeping up a lot of pressure, and just able to get these actual down secured just a little bit quicker is, tr is giving him more hook stages at a much faster rate. So when he goes into endgame, he has much less to try and work out, as this should be a down onto Jaw as well. Will force a locker grab, but that will also be a fifth hook sixth hook stage rather coming over and that brings him only one hook stage away from securing a win survivors will have to reset but like they've got a minute left on jaw before they lose yeah i'm not gonna lie like look we can see we can the impossible can be possible but this this looks like even the tallest of orders for you know very talented teams so it looks like you know uh, albeit you know pending potentially the craziest plays of x9's lives that's gonna be the win for elysium and we are going to have we have a set on our hands going to set three we're gonna see the oni it's gonna be a really good time and that's gonna be the kill on the wispy Oh yeah, Elysium X9, certainly not disappointing. Doctor set, a little bit of a slow start, but this Wraith set is absolutely delivering. And we know, looking forward to that Oni set, it's going to be high octane. As this now is this chase onto Haunt. Actually, a tag, a pop of Weasel on the gen. No need to greed, we're just going to play this out slowly and send a message. Yeah, and that's the, the craziest thing too is that Wispy's your captain, so you already know, and you already know that Wispy, very vocal, can definitely, uh, you know, command situations as he sees fit. So uh, having him out right now at this point could potentially uh, that might be, that might just be the game. Yeah, this this is the point in the game where you just got to collect yourself, keep your nerves, you know, calm, and realize, okay, we got another shot, we got another set. That's what we got to play for. Is now Haunt. Doing a good job of keeping his eyes on where Zeno is. Pre-drops that pallet does not want to get caught out, but Shadow Dance is going to shred that so quickly. He does have a pretty strong window over here to play. And I don't think this pallet is up anymore. He does have a pallet here. Okay, so he does have a long wall. And yeah, this the Shadow Dance yeah. coming in to kick that so quickly. But this is still a rough window to play for Wraith. He does not have Bamboozle. Han has to read the 50-50. And he does not. This will be yeah. the down. Yeah, unfortunate right there. Yeah, just the fact that, like... Dealing with like Shadow Dance and like Swift Hunt is so hard, uh, you know, especially on latency too, because it's more so like, do I drop this pallet? Like, how much of a timer do I have shortened now? Like, when do I drop the pallet? If you drop it too late, you might get Pocos. If you drop it too early, you just get it broken really quickly, and then it doesn't even matter anyways. So it's really hard to deal with. And yeah, I think this might be maybe one more gen being done, but yeah, definitely not going to see all five generators being completed. Obviously, like we said earlier, the win condition's already been met uh, by Elysium, but yeah, it looks like we might get just like a, a you know good old 4K. And one thing that you see a lot of from, from mechanical chases on the race side is you drop the pallet and you can sort of slow vault into him, vault back, and, and you do this to deny him from Shadow Dance kicking the pallet. And then the mind game is, is he going to fully uncloak and hit me or is he not? But that just becomes so much more risky when you're playing on ping. Uh, especially since I know uh, one, maybe two of the survivors here are on NA West. And so we're, we're not seeing them go for that, just playing it safe, pre-drop the pallet, and then just leave. But um, maybe if we were on same ping, we'd see more of that. And now uh, Haunt going to get caught out on the pallet. He runs edge map, but it will be a down. It will be eruption procs. And now Jaw is the last survivor standing, possibly going for Vistuous, possibly playing for a hatch, maybe. But it, of course, does not really matter. That will be the unhook coming in the distance. And more pop goes the weasel. Yeah, just, I mean, hey, this slowdown is working so well for Zeno. He's just, you know, guaranteeing, you know, even if he's not getting, you know, even if at first it was a little bit slow, he was at least, you know, applying at the very minimum double pressure on each gen because he was getting, uh, he was getting pain resonance and he was getting pop. And then if once uh, he started popping the gens, he was starting to get eruption value as well. So just the fact that he was able to, you know, just, you know, slowly but surely just play the war of attrition against x9 and was able to actually just get this met and that's gonna be a 4k at two gens remaining well over the win condition and that's going to be uh you know 
Elysium taking set two over X9, and we're going to a tiebreaker set, and this one is for winner's finals. This is top three guaranteed, and it's going to be on the Oni. It's going to be on Dead Dog Saloon. We know who's killing for X9, but who is going to kill for Elysium right now? I will say... Zeno as Zeno came in and you know just brought it. He just brought it. Played that slow, methodical EU play style that I feel like I see a, all the a lot compared to the more aggressive NA. Uh, and Zeno just made it work. This one's gonna be this one's gonna be a photo finish for sure, man. Yeah, we've seen time and time again when when the pressure is on, when he's got something to prove, Zeno just locks in and pulls out the best performances of his life, and we're seeing that here. Yeah, that experience too. I mean, you know, I'm. I forget how old Zeno is, uh, definitely in a, an adult now, but like has been playing for so long. And just the, the top tier experience uh, that he's had for so long, uh, you know, finally coming in, you know, and leading a team, right? Leading a team like Elysium and just like able to just share that experience and able to keep that level headness, uh, you know, especially, you know, with you know, some of the best survivors in the world, some of the best killers in the world, obviously now with Zaka additionally joining the team, you know, having to manage all that talent you know as a captain can be really stressful but you know when it's crunch time when it's winner's bracket on the on, life on the line Zeno comes in and just leads by example the captain's facing off set two and Elysium taking it on uh, and now we're going to an Oni set game number three Cole it's going to be such a photo finish it's going to be a great time I'm so excited but we're going to take a short break and when we come back we're going to the Oni on Dead Dog Saloon. All right, folks, the stage is set. We are in the final set of Elysium versus X9. Zaka kicking off with the Oni against X9 survivors on Dead Dog Saloon and an immediate chase onto Wispy at the main building. Drops that firecracker to try and get some distance as the chase is so quick. I wonder how the Bonds were here is Wispy will make the back window and he is the head-on survivor so no one there set up a head-on for him unfortunately but he will keep making these windows and it looks like Zaka does have bamboozle obviously a great choice for this map Wispy running main building still he should be able to make this front wagon pallet which is usually what you want to chain to the main building if he does he actually just holds his distance and gets to the town side of the map, but this should be a tag onto him with the Bloodlust coming in. That will be the first M1 for the Oni's power to start stacking up, but Wispy has made it presumably to the portion of the map where they want him to be chased so that they can work gens elsewhere, and we'll see how much time he can buy. The Oni is still an M1 killer, does not have his power yet. Wispy makes it to Shaq. Actually, he should not be able to make this pallet. He does actually make it and gets his son! He made it, made it, made it to that pallet, smash hit, gets a little bit more distance and buys a little bit of more time for his team, delaying that first down. That's like the key, that's the key against Oni for sure as well. Not before a first gen pops right here though, great stuff. And you see, oh, that was a double, that was a double team on that gen right there. You saw both survivors kind of come in and we get the immediate reset too, uh, right there uh, onto Wispy. So this is gonna be, uh, a uh, yeah, he has to rotate back. Absolutely, you gotta stop that heal, but obviously we saw the yellow bar. So we know that heal was coming in rather quickly so um man this is uh this is definitely a not necessarily the greatest start but we do see a little bit of the orbs kind of scattered around certain parts of the map so we potentially could see uh we could see some you know some some power come in clutch later later in the game but yeah i stand corrected zaka did not bring bam and that will make chasing some of these tiles very painful finally having that breakable wall at the back window of main broken and now just standing up on the main building with his power ready to go looking to see if he can find any survivors trying to cross maybe you obviously don't want to pop that power until you know you're on someone's trail so they can't just yeah. stealth out your power now that everyone's healthy yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that, yeah, the fact of the matter is, yeah, you have to wait until someone crosses your line of sight uh, until you pop that power, uh, so you can pop that power. You maybe break this pallet and maybe pop the power late, uh, pop the power after, maybe forcing Haunt into a sticky situation. But here, he's just going to be very intent on making it to this pallet right here, not before he gets the tag. Zaka ending up getting a little bit more orbs later that he's gonna definitely need. So can we get this down? Yeah, we're going to the window. That's gonna be the down right there onto Haunt. 
finally getting the first down not before a gen pops maybe maybe we get two i'm not really too sure but no this is exactly where zaka's just gonna snowball because he knows survivors have to get off these gens they have to you know position themselves to get the save but also to get away from the oni's power altogether so this is where we're gonna see oh wispy you gotta be careful trying to make some cocktails right here for zaka zaka wants none of it and gets the down on to wispy here two people on the ground and you know this is where oni can snowball we're gonna see the uh, chase right here and we see the pickup on the heart we're gonna see the down onto jaw yes we are and again this is time survivors are taking away uh from gens and now we're gonna see the pickup finally yeah i believe the technical term for this is problems team as we had three downs with the use of the oni's power well an m1 down into two chain downs with the power and that is the pressure that you want to see from the killer now that is the question will be how much blood is there actually left on the map depending on how quickly the survivors are able to reset from the slug we've already got uh vistuous and Whitby actually fully healed and now haunt getting healed off in the distance and decent progress on the gem they're healing next to zaka taking the time to break a lot of these pallets that were pre-dropped in those previous chases getting some more blood i don't know if he will have enough to get his power back he will probably have to find this reset he's going in the right direction for it now every survivor healthy again, but with the hook on jaw and a lot of pallets dropped, they do have actually a surprising amount of gen progress here. Wispy using this cosmetic to just stealth in the bushes, not being seen, solid snake moment. And this actually is enough blood to get power once again as the second gen pops. And Zaka sort of on the hunt for more survivors. Wispy has to be very careful on this gallows. Yeah, definitely has to be really careful on, onto the gallows right here. I mean, if we see uh, potentially, I mean, it really depends on, you know, if, because uh, I'm pretty sure if the BL user is on the gallows gen, then that makes it that much easier for you to get around. But that's not Wispy. So you have to be careful right here. Are we going to greet this gen or do you have to get off very quickly? And yeah, that's going to be, uh, that's going to potentially be the, um, oh no, is this going to be the, no, yeah, you have to wait and then you just get the grab onto wispy and that's going to be uh the the next fresh hook right onto onto wispy but then she's going to get some pain res right here uh how much value are we going to get no the other gen pops as well so that means that gallus gen is the one that's going to be affected right here uh a little bit of a sticky situation though because jaw was still on the hook that entire time finally gonna get the yeah that's the bait that's a bait it's gonna wait until you get the window wall Ooh, ooh, a little bit interesting right there. Not not really the best uh, best situation right there for Zaka, but we're still going to get the power regardless. And are we going to get a cutoff right here? Yeah, you got to drop that pallet a little bit earlier. You don't want to get Pogos through in full power, especially not while you're dead on hook. Can we find the stealth right here? No! That shirt's a little bit too bright for this map right here. So Zaka going to get uh, the down confirmed on the jaw. Are we going to get potentially a, uh, a hook right here? No, it looks like we're just going to confirm this kill. What we saw from Zaka there, he he lunged at the window, not trying to hit Jaw, but he wanted to get the extra speed to get around him to body block the window so that he could wait out the base hit BP. Just not quite able to get that, and now that will be the death onto Jaw. And because of Wispy, or um, yeah, Wispy jumping into the locker at the start of Oni's power, he got grabbed. He did stop the the snowball of the of the power slugs, but it meant that when Wispy got hooked, there was just so much power available for. Azaka, he was very close to getting it back, and now we will probably see all gens popping this game, and the question will just be how many how many survivors are going to go down for this? Assuming presumably we will have at least one more death, but um, you know the knife's edge that we have on an Oni set is real here, as Zaka has so much blood up here. He found where Asaras had reset before. He's got his power again. This is going to be a death sentence for one survivor minimum absolutely definitely going to be a death sentence are we going to find yeah you have to pressure the gen right here obviously the gen's going to pop at this point you know uh it's just it's just the three gen that is difficult to maintain and just the pressure that these survivors have been doing is that bo if you drop yeah that has to be bo yeah yeah well that's really really good play right there and that i, I believe is uh vistress gonna have to come gonna have to consistently push that gen uh and it has to be it has to be vistress it can't be anyone else just because uh the power is now online for sure so but now we see the chase is onto water tower potentially gonna get it no just gonna go back right here oh but wispy oh zaka saw wispy in the corner of his eye potentially and that was enough to get it right here are we going to be able to snowball potentially another survivor you know this is around it can zaka find them that's the most important thing the question that will potentially be answered right here no 
Yeah, Zaka just read where Wispy would have gone, and it's crucial that he found him there because you don't want to be in a situation where you pop your power and the survivors just stealth it out. So far, the other two survivors are doing a good job of hiding. They do not want to give Zaka another down here, and this will give Zaka time to pick up and hook Wispy in a spot where he wants this to be, but there are still two gens that had decent progress, and the survivors have remained unseen. This could actually be a basement hook. Yeah, it will be basement. That is going to be a problem for X9. Wispy having two more stages on him. Haunt and Vistu is still fresh, at least. Maybe ideal scenario for them here is to try and get the two fresh survivors out. But that's going to be a bit of a tall order right now. As Wispy is hooked also in the middle of the sort of triangle of gen. And they're losing a lot of progress from the eruptions. I think we saw, or heard rather, the Gallows gen actually activating... That new mechanic where you can only regress it eight times. So Gallows will not be losing progress going forward. And they have their balance landing survivor still in the game. Yeah, so it just makes pressuring that gen that much more effective and that much more difficult to maintain if you're Zaka. But not if you find Vistu is just running right in front of you and giving you a free down or a free hit, I mean. But does use that BL and yeah, has to get the free has to get the free down right here. And yeah, you at least force the BT hit onto Wispy. Yeah, you have to vault this window. But no, at this point he's just gonna cut his losses and just get the get the hook right here. Understanding that, you know, might as well just get another fresh hook. Uh, just for the sake of it, not going to get a pain res right there though, so potentially only see three pain reses this time around. If you can find Haunt, if not, we'll only see two for sure, but this is again, uh, Pop Goes the Weasel Valley potentially right here. Uh, we're going to find, yeah, there's going to be a pop right there into uh, Wispy uh, potentially being cut out right here, but you see him go into a zone where he knows that Zaka cannot commit to. Zaka has to play this, uh, has to kind of wait around the basement, and as soon as we see uh, another survivor cross, that's that's when it's go time so power's already online just waiting for that one opportunity to strike and potentially gonna catch wispy right here has the mobility option now this is where you can actually commit if you're if you're zonka and now that's gonna be the, un the down right there and that's gonna be the rescue and this is where you make it to basement can you find someone can you find the right survivor right here yes you are you're gonna cut him off and can you make it no no one home just wastes a little bit more time and now going to have to go back the placement of that hook is so brutal, and I didn't actually see Vich was getting out of the basement there. Zaka must just have much better eyesight than I do, and now he knows where that last survivor is. Yes, it's out of his power, but he can possibly go for it. He could honestly just pick up Wispy and get that kill confirmed, and then just go looking for Haunt, but he looks like he wants to just go for Haunt now. Maybe? No? Maybe worried that Haunt is hovering for the pallet save. Besides, you know what, I'm just gonna risk it. Picks up Wispy, this will be the death onto Wispy, and... The, that basement hook just was sealing the game for the survivors. I, I don't know if playing that altruistically was the correct decision here, but this is now a, a 2v1 with the the state of the game being on Haunt's shoulders, and now he has to try and pull something out to save Vistuous here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, the the fact that the fact of the matter is definitely the you know maybe you need to confirm. <gasps> he walked right past them. He walked right past them. Didn't see him. Unfortunate right there. Haunt able to stealth out just a little bit longer, but you see the locker check. You're so close. You're getting warmer and warmer, Zaka. Can you find Haunt? But the fact of the matter is, like you said, that definitely a great point to make. That you know maybe uh, at that point at the at the basement, you just cut your losses and you just push this last gen to at least meet uh, at least meet the 4k zero uh win condition at the very worst but now 4k one potentially could be uh, a little bit uh a little bit cumbersome to deal with so it's gonna have to be uh you know what are we going to see right here from zaka can we see uh the pickup onto vistras or are we going to find haunt finally uh, and get this uh get this confirmed uh confirmed 4k at one gen left yeah and this is the uh the very slow and, and honestly quite painful part of the game where you know you know what the outcome is going to be unless someone has a stroke live on air, but you just have to wait for it to happen. Is Now Haunt is just milking this Gallows to try and not be found. Zaka on the wrong side of the map to find where he is, possibly just looking for Vicious at this point, but keep in mind, Haunt has not been hooked yet, so... That could be a, a potentially a lost uh, fresh hook, but Vistuous has been hooked before, so a bleed on him does not matter. And now the question will just be, is Haunt going to go for the save onto his teammate? Is he going to play for Hatch? Is he going to play for a gate? Right now, he seems to be content to just chill out this Gallows.
man, he's right there. The fact that he's been so close so many times to find Haunt, this is a stealth game for sure. I mean, that's plus, uh, plus, you know, plus reps for Haunt for able being able to stealth out as, as much as you can. Oh, there it is. Oh. All Wait, right. you have to close this. Is it being body blocked properly? That's the question. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. All right, one more attack. It has to be, right? Uh, Cow uh, should run me one. Oh wait, we're not on the right map. Oh, that's my fault. <laughs> but hey, that's that actually would have been a really, that would have been a really unfortunate scenario if Zaka was not positioned correctly to get that to get that hatch, uh, to get the close onto the hatch. But that's gonna be the 4K at one gen. I mean, the stage is set. Wispy has to, Wispy has to better this performance and. Honestly, against a team like Elysium, it might be the game of his life, to say the very least. Yeah, the, the game was going so well. It just, there was that turning point with that basement hook where everything just went downhill, you know. So we're going to have to see. This is what happens with Oni sets. You know, no matter how the game is going, it can always turn around on a moment's notice because of how explosive this killer's power is. So now we'll have to see if the killer for X9 almost certainly will be possibly Vicious. Let's see who that will be in the last game of this match. Welcome back, everyone. This is potentially the last game of the set well anticipated highly anticipated set and what a performance from zaka coming in Zeno had an amazing performance set too and zaka said i gotta match you my friend you know you put in all this work i gotta match that energy as well 4k at one gen is the win condition right here wispy gonna have to play the game of his life in order to steal this set right from underneath elysium's nose and that was a very interesting sort of back step by wispy there i'm not sure if he was expecting someone to be behind main but he does lose a little bit of distance onto Zeno for this. We'll take the time to break that wall behind main. Does not commit to a chase at main. He's not bringing Bam, doesn't really want to deal with that. He's just looking for another survivor who might be in a worse spot, as that's a really early pre-drop pallet from Royalty, it appears, who will now be able to make it to Shaq. And you want to abuse the safest pallets that you have against Oni to make sure that he doesn't get his pal power until you absolutely have no other choice. So now Royalty gets a live, live proc around Shaq, drops the Shaq pallet, and will be running over into town. Or actually, no, he will be able to make main from this, but I don't know if he has enough distance to make back window. Does not matter. Wispy will be also dropping Chase here, finds another survivor who was working on that same generator, and now they have a little bit less resources to work with from what Royalty had. It's Kexo being chased down towards the town. And it's, we need to see, will he make this pallet? He will, should, he should be able to make town here. And he does make this window. Man, that's so unfortunate. Uh, this, you know, obviously delaying the first down is so important, but even delaying the first hit right now, doing a really good job. Kexel able to maintain uh, some advantage right here. Finally gets the hit over the, uh, over, uh, you know, that pal, but not before a gen gets done in the distance, right? Uh, obviously, we, we see, we see the chase, uh, we see the claw on the Zaka as well. So he's nearby as well. Potentially could cut Zaka off or find him in an unfavorable situation. Get a hit? No, gonna opt to just commit to Kexo has free power right here so wispy has you know probably dropping chase and going somewhere else and yeah right there onto uh onto xeno if i'm not mistaken so gonna have to end up going that's the bl do you pop the gen and then pop power or do you just you know commit to someone else it looks like he potentially might be going elsewhere in order to find maybe someone rotating in an unfavorable corner and able to get potentially this down right here but everyone's playing so safe right now everyone's stealthing out you know the comms have to be on point for sure yeah, I think the call there is just get your eruption put on the Gallus Gen. You want to, you know that Zeno has balanced landing from the previous chase, so you don't want to use your power on him while that's activated. Just get the eruption down, find someone else. He does find Kexo a little bit out of sorts. Kexo has sprint burst, so there's no exhaustion available for him right now unless he's got a 99. That's the M1 tag on him after the reset. So, unfortunately, does not mean a whole lot. Just setting up a little bit more blood on the map with that splintered hole. Just looking to get a power hit onto someone else and maybe onto Zaka here who does have the water tower pallet. And one thing that we're seeing in this Oni set is DDS has a lot of unsafe pallets. Most of the pallets here are not safe. And that means it's very easy for Oni to try and get those M1s and get your power ready. Unlike a map like maybe CT, where you can have some safe tiles chained together, you're basically never going to have that on this map. But Wispy is just 
not quite finding someone where he wants to actually use his power and the reset once again coming in onto Kexo stopping the blood from piling up as now Zaka is just going to put his water power pallet will he make it he pre-drops it it is broken and now he's going to make distance into the town he's at a relatively safe window here that will be enough to keep him safe from Wispy for now and he can sort of see around the corner if Wispy's coming does not hit him friendly tea bags maybe not so friendly I don't know Zaka continue to chase around Water Tower, but there's no resources left over here. And he is the head-on player. Quick and quiet head-on, possibly going to give him out here, but it will not. This will be the down. <gasps> Crouch text him, Whoa. and now... Oh, no. That's that's a tilter. And the T-Bags furiously coming in after Zaka has dodged Wispy's hits like three times. Another vault. This is the Ego play, and the Locker Jump not quite coming in. This will be the down. And, but Zaka has run Wispy out for his entire power. That's crazy. I mean, Zaka going up against them, uh, having just hit a 4k1 on them, and now, you know, prolonging this chase for so long in order to get, uh, you know, um, you know, get the best advantage right now for his teammates. And man, yeah, those ferocious teabags, man, there has to be some animosity between these guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, and the one thing we'll have to keep an eye out for, yes, pop eruption coming in on this gen, but because of how quickly Elysium survivors were resetting Kexo, there probably is not a whole lot of blood available on the map. And it's also probably in parts of the map where Wispy's not terribly invested in going right now. We see a fairly brutal 3 gen here actually around Gallows that we can get on DDS. It has not been broken yet. Pop eruption giving value there. Zeno just pre-dropping his pallet, gets the firecracker down. This will be a blind onto Wispy, who now has to sort of follow Zeno by his footsteps. He will go into the shack, but there's no pallet here. So this actually is almost certainly going to be a tag onto Zeno, but he will make that vault just in time. Gets the balance landing triggered, and also having vigil means he's able to play around his balance landing relatively consistently. That's a third generator popping with only one hook stage to his name, and Zaka getting unhooked before going second. Wispy now basically has to play for a snowball because there is no other way he's going to get all four deaths before two generators pop. Yeah, it, it, honestly, yeah, it has to be a snowball, it has to be a slug, you gotta find, and this is a situation where, uh, you know, if the survivors are well coordinated, they just play way more spread out, knowing that the snowball's coming, so they try not to be in situations where they can both get kind of caught out, so, honestly, just the fact that, you know, you know, uh, Elysium just making this win con basically impossible. Tried to get a potentially a mind game. No one home for it. Wispy having to rotate someone else understands very clearly that you know we have to make we have to rotate to a different part of the map in order to catch maybe a survivor lacking. But obviously the communications are on point. So can you cut someone off? Can you find someone hiding out your power? No one home so far. Can we find someone that's so close? No. But honestly, with two survivors healthy and one of them even having head on, it's if if you know that all you have to do is just play to avoid the snowball, like it's not that big a deal if Zaka or sorry if Wispy finds like the one injured survivor, as long as everyone else stays safe. And now Zeno able to make main, and he does not quite have his balance landing. As long as Wispy keeps him running. Zeno should not be able to get his balance landing back up, but if he gets him even a little bit of an edge, then Zeno has that balance landing ready to go on the main building. And it's just leaving. He is having such a hard time finding chases that he wants to commit to, looking for blood on this area where Kexo had been getting reset before. He should get his power off of this, but you have to find some better chases here, and it's just not happening. Oh, man. Yeah, this is... uh. Yeah, it's not working out right now for Wispy, unfortunately. I hate to see it after a very uh, hard-earned game number one and a well-fought game number two. Unfortunately, you know, Elysium just out-experiencing this team right now, trying to find someone potentially here. Yes, he finds it. Gets the down onto Royalty. This potentially could be a start, but no, you're going to have to... Yeah, just going to opt to just go for the hook immediately. Maybe just slow the gents down just a little bit. But yeah, you do have to go in and maybe try to get something. Are you going to... No, you're not even going to get a Scorch hook. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, you have to be careful when you go into the tall grass, because wild Pokemon live there, and apparently also royalty. And now the hook occurring in his 3-gen, Zaka gonna go for that fast pull, just not wanting the snowball. But Wispy has left far enough away from the hook that this is, again, a fairly free rescue, and royalty apparently has renewal. And now yeah, Zeno yeah, going back yeah. to main. 
Yeah, yeah, renewal, second win, whatever you call it, right? Just depending on, you know, how long you've been playing the game for. But yeah, gonna end up getting that uh, full reset in just a few seconds. And there it is, just as soon as the power pops, right? And you pretty much have to, uh, you know, you pretty much have to commit here potentially. Can you find, maybe just nullify that reset just all entirely? But right now, the survivor's making it really difficult for Wispy. He finds someone, he's on a trail, but unfortunately, no, just decides to go off after someone else. Maybe trying to cut someone off at a gen. Yeah, that's exactly the way you should rotate potentially away from Water Tower. But, you know, especially because there's a dead zone right there. There's a free pallet here. Can you find something? Wispy, though, no one home. Nobody home at all. Zaka stealthing out a little bit, knowing that Zeno's on, uh, or Wispy's on someone's trail. This is just a nightmare scenario for an Oni. You pop your power. You can't quite find anyone. DDS has... Conversely, it's kind of strange. It's not as safe as a lot of traditional Oni maps, but there's so many good places to hide for this. And now, Wispy just slamming the bushes in case there is someone there. Hail Mary attempt, there is not. He is running out of his power, and I'm pretty sure he just does not have enough blood left on the map to get that power anytime soon. He's got to commit to M1 chases, but four healthy survivors, and you have to kill all of them before one more generator pops is just not going to happen, bro. I'm sorry, but... Wait, he's got a whole lot of blood here. I stand corrected. That should be enough to get his power. One more yeah. shot at this. Wait, no. He's just off. Oh, man. Just like one or two orbs away from, you know, having full power. I mean, the next strike right here could potentially do it. But again, you know, if, uh, you know, if you got BL, you're denying that first hit. That's, that's, uh, that's, um, that, that's definitely, that'll do it. That's the power, though. We pop it, we rotate somewhere else, somewhere else. These survivors are playing so safely. Like, it feels like they were slamming gens, and now we're kind of just at this halt, like, in this mid-game scenario. But they're doing a really good job of just denying, you know, denying more downs right now off of, uh, from Wispy. But again, popping power with no survivor in your sight, this is kind of a, a desperation play, knowing, all right, if I play this out normally, the survivors are just going to pre-leave everything, and I will never see them. I have to pop my power, use Akito's crutch, try and catch someone off guard while they are pre-leaving. But the survivors are just playing this so slowly. They know that if they just play this out carefully and methodically, they will win this in the War of Attrition, especially now with the changes to the gen kicking, meaning it will run out eventually. And Zeno's being caught out here. He gets his balance landing, but Wispy kind of hits the rock instead, and now Zeno has a very unsafe pallet, opting to just die on it instead with the point tech. And there is Kexo hiding behind this um, edge map tile, waiting for the pull. Wispy gonna suss him out, does see that Kexo is right here. This will be an M1 onto him or a pallet drop. He has to choose, will get chased off. Wispy goes for the immediate pick, flashlight coming in, not an angle. And now this will be the hook onto Zeno, but a fourth, or, yeah, fourth gen popping in the distance means that tie condition at a minimum has been met with four, three healthy survivors rather, and no one even on death hook. It might, it might not happen. That might, this might be a wrap. 4x9. This potentially could be Elysium getting their get back after they went down uh, in the Hens tournament, and now coming in potentially cementing themselves as, you know, hey, everyone has us as the front runners to win this Winter Circuit, and we're here showing everyone that this is exactly why. Outlasting Wispy, maybe even out experiencing Wispy. There has thousands and thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of hours spread between these four survivors, and they're playing like it definitely shows can we potentially find something right there are we gonna get the oh that's not a bl though that's a that's kexo so are we gonna get this pallet potentially not a very good pallet that's gonna be the tag potentially i mean i want to say the thing that we've seen from this set and the last one is the elysium survivors have played very carefully and methodically every time and I feel like a lot of what has been going wrong in these games for X9 has been the survivor team falling apart a little bit towards the end of the game, a little bit of miscommunication maybe, just being a bit more scattered and chaotic, and Elysium is not falling for that. They are keeping a level head and playing things out the way they should, and that's not giving Wispy very many ins for, you know, these snowballs that have been happening to the X9 survivor side as with the last gen popping, this will secure the win for Elysium 2-1 as Wispy does have his power available when he collects his blood, but that gets almost open. That will be the fast pull onto Zeno, and this will be probably three outs if I don't think Hex is going to make it. Yeah, potentially three out right here. We get the pickup. Yeah, it's going to be the three out right there. And just like that, like you said, Elysium 
bringing it all the way back, going down game one on their pick two, and then having to come in, you know, Zaka, you know, unfortunately not having the showing that he wanted on the Doctor, and Zeno coming in, the captain of this team, holding it down, loser's uh, bracket potentially on the brink, wins a pretty decisive, I feel like, game number two, and then comes in and just leads his team to this dub right here, not before Zaka had an a, a exemplary showing with the Oni, and now going to make it through to winner's finals, and man gets the four out to boot what a way to just cement the exclamation point on this set against x9 gets their get back gets the revenge and we have a series potentially on our hands later absolutely elysium with a statement match and x9 is going to be looking terrifying to anyone meeting them in the losers bracket no one wanted to face either of these teams i'm pretty sure and now we get to see who who will be their opponent going forward yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, on winner's bracket side of things, we're going to see Elysium versus Calamity in winner's finals sometime next week. And that is best of five territory. So now the story is a little bit different, right? We don't get until best of five territory and losers until uh, semis. So that's going to potentially be, uh, you know, um, a, a, some... I don't know who's going to make it that far. Obviously, you know, we have uh, later uh, today, you know, Pretty much like after this break and once we get everyone switched out we have torment and synapse and we also have ariando and sinner so that's going to be uh you know two matches that potentially could go the distance as well playing the losers of um of today's winner's bracket matches as well uh night owls and uh x9 but you know definitely lots of dbd to be played regardless today and throughout this tournament there is no clear-cut winner yet definitely this set is potentially a preface to what we might see later on in grand finals potentially or are we going to see another favorite ariando make all make the run all the way back from loser round one so many questions that have to be answered